Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today we're going to be doing something super interesting. We just did uh, Chikrin Trade. Uh, go check that video out. Still people talking about it. And uh, I had a lot of fun doing it, don't you know? Today, though, it's getting... See, the season isn't that far away. It's like 50 days or something like that. It looks like most things are done now. Kadri went to Calgary. There's a couple free agents out there, but nobody that's going to move the meter too much. So we're going to look at the biggest questions from every NHL team. And uh, you can comment in the comment section. Tell me if you agree or disagree or how to solve the problems or if there are problems or anything of that nature. As anyone knows that subs up to me and comments, I comment back and I love to chat. That's why this is one take, no editing. Boom, I go off because if I make mistakes, it don't matter because we're going to talk about it all day down there in the comment section. So just sub up and let me know. All right. I'd rather spend time talking to you guys and all day editing and doing it seven times, whatever. <laughs> Let's get at her. We're going to start with the Anaheim Ducks. We're going in alphabetical order. And, uh, okay. So the biggest question for the Anaheim Ducks to me, and this you can say something differently here, is can they win consistently with this type of defense? Um, they have a very offensive defense. Klingberg, Shattenkirk is not that great defensively. Jamie Drysdale's young. He's probably going to be better defensively than you think, but at this moment, he's predominantly an offense. This is a puck-moving defense all the heck, and it seems to me that this is not by mistake. This is a team that is trying to win with mostly offense and I think the reason why that is is offense is exciting so even if you're not winning at least you are exciting so you've got guys like Zegras and Terry and, and uh, fantastic offensive players uh, Ryan Stroman Vetrano Vetrano is a great shoot first guy that I think is going to meld well in here and of course Mason McTavish is a beast um, but that's my biggest question a lot of people may say, what about John Gibson? Well, I don't think John Gibson is did poorly. I think he's just been crazily overworked. And that's part of the reason why I think this is the biggest question, is can John Gibson, can Gibson hold up to the fact that this team is not very defensively sound and doesn't look like they're going to be heading to that direction soon? Uh, my answer is in the regular season, you can get away with it. We saw with the Florida Panthers. We've seen it with Tampa Bay back in the day before they changed their ways. Um, you know, you can get away with it in the regular season. In the playoffs, however, I don't think, I don't know if it'll ever work. I would love to see it, but I don't know if it'll ever work. I will say that the Colorado Avalanche came pretty close with it. However, they have some pretty strong defensemen that are thought of as offensive defensemen but are very good defensively so these young players like uh drysdale and uh you know young players like drysdale and vekanainen i think are going to have to be get much better defensively and um cam fowler is already underrated defensively he's probably the only guy on this team that is decent defensively getting john klingberg never really didn't really help that out so that's my biggest question. Tell me what you think, Anaheim Ducks fans. What is your biggest question for the Ducks going into this season as far as what they may need or what you might be concerned about most about the Anaheim Ducks? Next, the Arizona Coyote. And really the biggest, the only real, there's only two real questions here. Are they going to be the worst in the league? And will Jacob Chikrin still be there come the end of next season? And my answer to the both of those questions, you tell me in the comment section if you have bigger questions than that. Um, 
My answer to that in both of these, uh, in both of those questions is probably not. I think Chicago is going to be worse. Uh, their coaching is too darn good for this team to be bottom of the league. Um, and they're, they have, they play a, a, a fantastic system that wins them games for here and there. And not only that, they have Carl Vomelka, who just goes off sometimes and <clears throat> win, wins games all by himself. So I don't think they're going to be the worst in the league. I also don't think Jacob Chickman will be there past the trade deadline next year. And I think those are really the two biggest questions in Arizona. Uh, tell me in the comment section if you have other bigger questions or if you agree with the ones that I came up with that those are the biggest questions. Next, the Boston Bruins. And I think everybody's biggest question here is, will this team hold up until Marshawn and McAvoy comes in? Every team in the division, almost every team in the division got better. Detroit, Ottawa, you know, maybe not Montreal, but those bottom dwellers got better this year. And we'll look into those as we go through here. And Boston, of course, without McAvoy in the lineup, is this team going to be able to hold up with Lindholm? Carlo needs to step it up from last year. He didn't really have a great year. You know, Riley, Connor Clifton is actually a lot better than people give him credit for. But Derek Forbert and Connor Carrick, uh, Jeremy Swayman's going to have a lot on his plate. And Linus Allmark also has to have a better year than last year as well. Now, my answer to the question of where they hold up, they went and got Bergeron back. They got the feel-good story of David Krejci bringing the boys back. That's Boston's always going to be Boston. There's always going to be heart. They're always going to be fighters. I think they're going to be close to the bubble come the time that players start coming back. So I guess it's a good question if the answer is I don't know. Because that's really what the biggest question should almost be an I don't know. Tell me what you think. I, I don't know if Pavel Zaka is going to fit here. I, I have no idea. He didn't very well in New Jersey. How is he going to here? Not sure. Is DeBrus going to, you know, he had a good last 15 games or so last year. Is he going to be able to keep that up? Possibly. Interesting year for sure. And uh, that's my biggest question. I, I don't question Swayman. I do question whether this team, without Marshawn and McAvoy especially, are going to be, hold, be able to hold up until they get back. So what do you guys think? What's your answer to that? Do you think there's a bigger question than that? Uh, it should be also offensive depth too. Because that's always been the question. But the reason why I didn't say that's the biggest question, because they seem to get by every year, even though they don't have it. The Buffalo Sabres. And I I love this team, to tell you the honest truth, this year. I really do. On most fronts, um, I think the, there's going to be the, – the biggest questions really is Jeff Skinner going to be able to do it again because he's been so inconsistent. It's almost been like good year, bad year, good year, bad year. So the good year last year, is he going to be a bad year this year? Or is he going to finally be a consistent Jeff Skinner at the age of 30 years old? To answer your question, I'm leaning he'll have a good year simply because Granado is an amazing coach. That's really why I, I think he's had a good year to begin with and why al almost everybody – had such a good year on this team. He's an incredible coach. I think he will get the best out of all of these guys. So it's actually not my biggest question. My biggest question certainly isn't the defense. I love, love, love this defense. I think there is a question about whether this young defense is going to be ready fully to get this team into the playoffs. But I honestly think Buffalo has a pretty darn good chance to make the playoffs. The biggest question, though, is Eric Comrie. Eric Comrie has been moving up. Well, let's take a look at it. Eric Comrie has, is sort of like those that late blooming, slow progression type goaltender that has gone through <clears throat> some growing pains along the way. You know, played a couple games in Winnipeg, most of it spent most of his time in the AHL all the way up until 27. Put up some good numbers in the AHL. 
And then last year did really good for Winnipeg and looked really good doing it. <coughs> the question is, is that going to translate into being basically a number one goaltender in Buffalo? And that's why I think this is the best, the biggest question, because my answer is I don't know. I'm hoping he does. I love Eric Colm. He's funny as heck, by the way. He's one of the funniest guys. He's great in the room. He'll make he'll he'll he he's hilarious. I hope he is. And obviously Buffalo thinks he is. What do you think out there? To me, that's the biggest question. If Eric Comrie can keep his numbers right about that in more than 19 games, that's 258 and a 920. I think Buffalo can make the playoffs this year. I really do. I think they can beat out Boston and get in. So, do you guys think that? That's my biggest question. All right, Calgary Flames. And this one might take a bit. Um, biggest question. My gosh. Um, will My biggest question, I'll say it right off the top. There's a lot of questions here that are probably on everybody's head. Um, will, will these, will these uh, new guys that they got, like Huberto, Caudry, will they gel together with Toffoli? You know, it, it's a big mixed up, mix up of players from last year. My, I think the more important question is, will Nazem Kadri be the 87-point player he was last year, considering... He never did it before, and he's 30 some years old. It's just a huge red flag for me that a guy gets 87 points on a strong Colorado team, and now he comes to Calgary. Before that, he was, what, an average of a .75 at best player? Somewhere around .5 to .75. So, like, his average would be about .6 games, which would make him like a 55-point player making $7 million. Uh, he's over, people overrate him defensively, but Sutter may change all of that. And that's the biggest thing. Always going to be here. What Sutter did with that team last year, is he going to do the same with this, that, this team this year? I think probably I'll never sell Sutter short ever again. I kind of did last year and I won't do it again. I think probably Huberto is going to need help defensively. Uh, he's not very good defensively, so we'll see how that turns out. But for me, the biggest question is, with Kadri in mind, is will this team hold up injury-wise? Because I think their biggest question is their replacement players. They really don't have, maybe Connor Zaria 20, I doubt it. You know, Matthew Phillips, they went out and try, they're going to try him out. Uh, Walker Dewar looked okay last year when he came up. But this team looks like the Islanders of the West. They're going to burn out their veterans. And by the time playoff comes out, count time comes, they're going to be burnt out. I, I often wondered why Sutter didn't get Calgary to play a dump and chase game against Edmonton where they're very susceptible to that type of game. And now I think I just talking about this answer, my question, they didn't have it. They didn't have it physically by that time. They just don't have the replacement players. I think necessary to give these guys a break. If they happen to have some banged up injuries where they can, okay, get yourself well. They could play through it, of course. The Islanders, guys, they do that all the time. You know, it's a great warrior mentality to have. But by the time you play in the playoffs, if you look at Tampa, Colorado, the teams that make it to the finals, they have guys that take like seven games off and really they probably could play through all of that. But they have replacement players that are good enough to hold the fort until then. And I'm concerned whether Calgary has that. So that's my biggest question for the Calgary Flames. I'm not, I have no question about their defense, that's for sure. That defense is absolutely fantastic. It's their offensive depth that I'm a little worried about. Okay, next, Carolina Hurricanes. And the biggest question is the same biggest question I had last year. And that's will the goaltending be 
make it? Will they be healthy come playoff time? Frederick Anderson and Antti Ranta have had a history of being injured, and they did it again. Ranta made it. He was injured in the regular season. You know, he did well in the playoffs, but that's not the guy you want. It really comes down to Frederick Anderson. Besides that, I have I have very little questions about this lineup. Even even without Pacioretty, you know, with Pacioretty being injured, I think this lineup easily makes the playoffs. Their defense is fine. They have great replacement players for those guys. They can give guys a break. Um, this lineup is stacked. My biggest question is, will Anderson hold up? And uh, so tell me what your biggest question is here. That's pretty much it for Carolina. Besides that, they're set, which really had me – that's my that that I had the same questions last year as I do this year, so we'll see how that turns out. Okay, Chicago Blackhawks, and it's just a question of whether they're going to be the worst team in the league, and of course whether Taves and Kane are going to get traded. And I say yes on both. I think this team <clears throat> has every reason to be the worst team in the league. Lucas Reichel. As a 20-year-old, as your top-line left winger, playing with Taves and Kane, which will help out to a certain extent. Uh, hopefully he doesn't watch Kane float around in the defensive zone and do nothing and pays more attention to Taves. Because, uh, but besides that, Athanasiu, Domi, and Tyler Johnson, I mean, these are those are guys that have just never been a, totally effective. How many teams have they gone to so far? Um, there's been... Commitment issues on both sides, uh, certainly defensive issues. Max Domi has a has a diabetes issue. I, I actually think Athanasiu has the same. And <clears throat> so that makes it very difficult for them to be playing second pairing when there's really nobody to take over here. Um, the defense isn't bad, but the goaltending, obviously, Peter Morazic is a great goaltender to have if you want to come last. I don't see any motivation for this team to be anything other than the worst team in the league. Maybe their uh, new coach, Richardson, will be I, – I, I really don't – I heard a lot of great things about him. You know, the same as the coach in Arizona. He could maybe bring something out of this group, but, I mean, that's a lot of – if he, and I don't even think anybody that's going to be watching this team wants to see them win. Everybody wants them to get Bedard. So those are the biggest questions, and I think both of them are yes, yes. All right. Next, Colorado Avalanche. And my biggest question for Colorado, there's only one real question as far as I'm concerned, and I hope everybody else is concerned. Maybe everybody else is concerned as well. Tell me in the comment section. Sub yourself up to my channel. And let me know. It's uh, Alexander Gorgiev. I mean, he he's been not good. He, does he have? Has he shown signs of being good? Yeah, but far more signs than no. And I think the biggest reason why I've heard from things I've read is that he was stuck behind Shesterkin and felt defeated. And now he's going to get an opportunity. They're going to lift him up saying, we believe in you and all of those sort of things like that. And he's going to be a number one goaltender. My biggest question with that is, where is you, where are you mentally if you're biggest, if you are driven downward because of a concern of a guy being better than you? Are you still going, are you not still going to know that you have a guy that's better than you? But the thing here is in Colorado is, the here, thing in Colorado is they just won a cup with a guy in Darcy Kemper who didn't have a great playoff performance and is certainly not as good as Shesterkin. So Georgiev, in this case, can probably tell himself, I don't need to be as good as Shesterkin. I just need to be the best I can be. And maybe it'll work. But it's the biggest question mark for this lineup because there really isn't any other question mark in the lineup. Um down the road here, it's things are getting a little dicey with with uh, they're they're losing a lot of depth. There's not much depth now. 
most of their good players are in the lineup now. There's a couple guys like Martin Cout and Ben Myers looked all right. Their forward depth, their replacement players. There are replacement players, which is okay. Lucas Sedlak, they can fill in roles. Uh, defense, it's getting pretty thin, though. You know, like Sean Barron's is the next guy, really. Uh, Brad Hunt and uh, Jacob McDonald can fill in some holes. But it is getting thin. But the biggest question for me is goaltending. What do you think, Colorado fans? Sub up and let me know. All right. Columbus Blue Jackets. And this is, this is difficult. The biggest question really is how young these young players are going to, how fast these young players are going to integrate into the lineup. And by young players, and tell me, Columbus fans, if you agree with this, sub up and let me know. Kent Johnson and Cole Sillinger are the two big ones. Um, where is uh, Nick Blankenberg on defense? Right, these these young guys, uh, and Igor Shinnikov. There he is. They got him in the minors. Igor Shinnikov. How fast are they going to integrate in this lineup? Because almost assuredly, I don't know if you watched the World Juniors this year, but Kent Johnson is going to be a gamer, man. It's just a question of how soon he can be it. Um, I I I I have a tendency to overrate how fast young players are going to be there. So I don't want to say. And the answer is I don't know, which means this is a really good question. But tell me what you guys think. But when Cole Sillinger, who had a good year already last year at 19 years old, is he going to have a sophomore slump? Hard to say. I don't think so. But I never think so with young players. So take that with a grain of salt. But when he's great, and he will be great, and Tessier as well, You've got Tessier, uh, Johnson between Goudreau and Lyon is going to be one of the sickest lines in the league. And then you throw Tessier with uh, Sillinger and, you know, probably Borchek will still be there. Uh, and also, if uh, I really, really like Igor Shinnikov, I still think he has a ton of upside. He can play on that line. and. This lineup on the forward side of things looks like it's going to be pretty sick in the next two, three years already. The question is how fast will it happen? I think that's the biggest question. The next question I think will be defense, but they just added a whole bunch of, they just drafted a whole bunch of defensemen, so we'll see how they integrate into the lineup. But right now, they're pretty, they're going to struggle defensively for sure. Most of their guys are not that great defensively, including Zach Wierenski. So it's going to be tough that way. But I think that's the biggest question. Tell me what you think, Columbus fans. All right, Detroit. And the biggest question for, oh, sorry, this is Dallas, not Detroit. Dallas stars. The biggest question for me for Dallas is if they get Jake Ottinger signed. And will he win the Vesna this year? That's how big I think he is to this lineup and how great I think of a goaltender he is after we saw what he did in the playoffs last year. And not just that, just how we've seen him progress overall as a goaltender. Um, I think he could crush it this year. And on this team that I think most people will have as a bubble team, if they can make the playoffs and he puts up really good numbers, I could see a Vesna coming to Jake here this year. That would be my biggest question for this lineup. Other questions, and the one question I guess we have to ask, because we always do every year, and that is, will Ben and Sagan finally earn their keep? And my answer to that is not likely. It's just every year it's the same question, every year they don't. So that's my answer to that. What other big questions do you have? Do you think Colin Miller going to replace Klingberg okay? I, I don't think Colin Miller will replace Klingberg okay, but I think the overall defense will still be fine when you consider Miro Heskinen is going to have a bigger role. And one more question. I don't think it's the biggest question. I still think, Ottinger, how will DeBoer affect this lineup offensively? That is a really good question. 
And I, maybe it is the number one question because I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Sub up to my channel. Tell me in the comment section what you think Dallas will do this year, how they will do this year offensively with DeBoer now that Bonus is gone. He's a very defensive coach. Next, the Detroit Red Wings. And the biggest question for me for the Detroit Red Wings is how good is Huso going to be? That really is the biggest question for me because it's the biggest I don't know question. He's he he was the sexy guy, sexy goaltender pick all year. Everybody had him. He's going to be great. He's doing it. where are they getting this from? Last year he had an okay year. You know, in the minors, he had some okay numbers in Finland. I mean, he didn't really knock it out of the park. He just kind of came out of nowhere and had one good year. Now. I am sure that every Detroit fan is going to be like, I trust Stevie Eisenman, that's it. End of story, that's all. Okay. I'll give you that. You got to, you got to, it's hard not to have trust for Stevie Eisenman who built that Tampa Bay team and seems to be doing a really good job of building a team here. But I certainly would like to know where he got it from because I think it's a big question mark. I hope for... I hope for Detroit's sake, and Stevie Eisenman, by the way, is my probably my fa favorite male human in the land. Uh, so I'm with you on that, but I'm kind of worried. I, I have to say, I, I have my questions about Ville Husso being the guy. If he is the guy, this could be a playoff team. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll add in a little more. Ben Sherrod and Olimata are both, uh, Ole Matt is okay defensively. Ben Chirot's not good defensively. I don't really get it. But I think it... I actually think... I just wanted to make the statement. I think Ben Chirot is going to learn more from Maurice Sider than Sider is going to learn from Chirot. If Sider can show Chirot how to play as a big player without running around in the defensive zone trying to hit people and putting yourself out of position, Ben Sherratt could be huge here. Huge. I know everybody everybody is thinking that Stevie Eisenman went and got Ben Sherratt to help Sider. I personally think it's the other way around. I think Stevie Eisenman knows that Ben Sherratt can be very good defensively, almost like what Sutter did with Branson and Calgary last year and Zadorov. This the new coach who I gotta admit I I'm not uh I I don't know all that much about it except that he came Derek Lalonde, he came from Tampa Bay. Stevie Eisenman loves him, that's good enough for me. Uh can help him in that area as well, but I think he needs to be helped in that area. And uh so, and then he can, you know, they can work together because Ben Chirot can protect Maurice Sider, which is important as well. But I wanted to throw that out there. Besides that, I have very little issues with this lineup. I mean, if Huso is as good as he looks like he could be, if he progresses, like obviously Stevie Eisenman thinks, this could be a playoff team this year. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about everything I said. And we're going to go off to the Edmonton Oilers now. And the biggest question for the Edmonton Oilers is this is not the same as last year because I think Jack Campbell, the biggest question was goaltending last year. And it was a worthy question because goaltending was an issue last year. Uh, I think Jack Campbell still is an issue because he is either, he's one of those goaltenders that in his history anyways, has been absolutely amazing or absolutely horrible. And through the horrible stretches, it's all about getting him back into shape mentally to get to where he is. Now, I think that they've got a good enough coach here that, you know, that we'll see. Uh, Jay Woodcroft seems to be an extremely good coach. This is going to be a challenge to see how good of a coach he is for goaltenders. There are some great goal coaches out. A, a real sign of an amazing coach is how they get the best out of goaltenders. 
Tortorella has done an amazing job with goaltenders in his in the his, in his history. Trots, also, uh, Quinville, sort of. You know, there's some great. It's a sign of a great coach. So he's going to get a chance here to take a Cam, take Campbell, who's had confidence issues his whole past, and see how good he is. However, that's not the biggest question mark for me. The biggest question mark for me is still defense and team defense at that. Um, first defenseman, Darnell Nurse, actually had a good year defensively last year until he was injured and tried to play injured, which he was kind of flopping all over the place and everybody said he was terrible, but he wasn't all year. Cody Cece actually had a good year defensively last year. Got to admit it, didn't see it coming. But the second half, he played well. I don't think he should be your... I don't think he should be on your first pairing. However, he is. I think Evan Bouchard will be there eventually, and that'll be fine. And he's going to get better defensively as well. I do believe that. Uh, Brett Kulak, love him. Not sure about a top four. So see what I'm saying? Like, it's very low. It, it There's a whole bunch of four to... Four to six guys playing through the lineup. Then the question mark is Philip Broberg, and we have no questions about Tyson Berry being a poor defenseman. He just is. He's <laughs> so, and then there's not much after that. It's still the defense. I think it is better than it was last year, though. As far as forwards are concerned, I, I was one of the biggest supporters of Cassian, and one of the reasons why I'm an Edmonton Oilers fan, sub up and let me know, Edmonton Oilers fans, if you agree with me on the, on this and anything I'm saying here, is because they give chances to players like Cassian and stuff like that. They embrace Evander Kane and, and give them a chance to redeem themselves after difficult times in their lives, uh, whatever the case may be. And that's the reason, more than the fact that I live in Edmonton, is why I'm an Oilers fan. However, this team has Zach Hyman, Nugent Hopkins and Jesse Pulley Harvey, maybe on maybe Ryan McLeod, that are good defensively as forwards. The rest are not. And I I know everybody's gonna get mad at me here. Uh, I know it. They're gonna say, yeah, but Pulley Harvey is good defensively, but he doesn't get enough offense because he was playing with McDavid and he was playing with you know why? Nugent Hopkins didn't have the greatest five on five. Offense last year. You know why? Because they don't fly the zone in the defensive end. And they end up being behind the play, the play because guys like, and I hate, I love McDavid for the just best player in the league. However, he's still not as good as he can be defensively. He's got the speed. He doesn't need to fly the zone. Ever. And I don't know who's helping them out with that or if they're telling them that or if they're even bothering. But, yeah, Evander Kane is going to pot a lot of goals. And their offense probably makes up for their defensive deficiencies. However, the team as a whole, like the Colorado Avalanche, will be a million times better if they start playing a lot like Zach Hyman, Nugent Hopkins, and Jesse Pulley Harvey. Everybody. There's no reason why they can't do it. And if they do, this is a cup team right here. This is a, even with the weaker defense that they have here, I think this is a cup team. But if they don't, I'm less believing that they are. Evander Kane flies his own like crazy. He's, just, he's not good defensively at all. That's the reason why Evander Kane is up there in the zone with the McDavid's and they and and, and dry side of the McDavid like playing with them, but they don't like playing with Jesse Pulley Harvey. I'm sorry, there's a problem here. If you don't like playing with Jesse Pulley Harvey, there's a really good chance that you are the problem, not Jesse Pulley Harvey. Yeah. Okay. That's what I got to say about that. Tell me what you think in the comments section about what I just said. Probably going to rip me apart, and I'm cool with that, by the way. Sub up, Oilers fans. Rip me apart. You can say whatever you want. I'm fine with that. Whatever stays, just like whatever stays that was said in the rink stays in the rink. Whatever you say in my comment section stays in the comment section. 
I will continue talking to you forever. I love all of you. I never block anybody. I don't care. You're frustrated. You're passionate. Awesome. Love it. Okay. Florida Panthers. Biggest question mark. Um, I was going to say goaltending, but right now it's got to be defense. Uh, losing Uyghur is, is huge. And I know you, Florida Panthers fans are going to, did you see them in the playoffs when he made this mistake, that mistake? His overall sample size has been fantastic. The fact that he choked up a couple plays in the in the playoffs doesn't mean anything, to tell you the honest truth. Um, that this the team as a whole did not play well because they weren't prepared for the way they were trying to play in the playoffs. Uh, they might as well just went all offense and saw see what they could do. Because this team was not prepared to play a two-way game. And now, so you wonder, why did Zito go out? Who is a very solid analytics guy, by the way? Why did he go out and get Matthew Kachuk and give up Uyghur and uh, give up Uyghur and look at him, Hubert Ho, sorry. Because Matthew Kachuk is a beast both ends of the ice. Matthew Kachuk is a left-wing version of Barkov. They are going to be insane. That top line is going to be crazy and probably lead this team into being one of the best two-way forward teams in the league up there with Colorado, with Lundell and all of those sort of things like that. But the biggest issue I have is they have defensemen that don't really sit well that way. Ekblad and Forsling, great. No no problems there. But after that, it gets dicey. Gudis is okay. He's okay in the top four, but not with Mark Stahl. That's a 5-6 pairing there, not a 3-4. They basically don't have a 3 and a 4. They have two 5-6s. Carlson, Montour, maybe Lucas Carlson will step up his game a ton and be able to do that this year. Maybe they're depending on that. But I think that's a big question mark in my mind. Sergey Bobrovsky, of course, is a question mark. I think Spencer not Spencer Knight rips the number one away from him this year. I I think he will, unless Bobrovsky really comes and gets over this last three years. Last year wasn't bad, but he's got to be way better. If he's able to be way better than that, then there's no question mark here. But because of Spencer Knight. I think the defense is more of a question mark than the goaltending. Florida Panther fans, let me know in the comments section what you think about that. All right. LA Kings. And the biggest question mark here is goaltending. I think they did pretty well getting Kevin Fiala. Might have been a bit of an overpayment, but, I mean, he's got tons of speed. He shoots. He plays the way McClellan likes his players to play. Shoot from everywhere. Boom, boom, boom. He's his type of player, so I get it. Uh, Kempe, Kopitar, Fiala. I think Kempe's going to keep on going. So I'm not really worried about their offense. They have a bunch of young players there that I'm sure are going to progress and get better. Uh, defense, I just did the uh, Jacob Chikrin trade, and L.A. was my number one pick. So you would say, well, don't you think that the biggest question mark is defense? No, I just think that he would be fantastic for this lineup. And I do think having a number one is one of the big questions. But the biggest question to me is whether Cal Peterson and Jonathan Quick can hold up. Everybody says that if he play, if Jonathan Quick plays like he did last year, they're going to be okay. But really, a .910 is that great of a goaltender? And he's 36 years old. Cal Peterson has got to step it up this year for sure. You can't expect a 37-year-old Jonathan Quick, who, of course, wanted to go into the Hall of Fame, deserves to go to the Hall of Fame, amazing player, even at 36 years old. You know, it's, it's fantastic. He's still as good as he is, no doubt about it. But is he really, you want to put that much on a 37-year-old? Cal Peterson's got to step it up this season. And to me, this, the L.A. season, as far as whether this team can be a cup contender or not, is dependent on it. Otherwise, they're going to have to go get another goaltender. That's my biggest question. LA Kings fans, let me know what you think.
there in the comment section. All right, Minnesota Wild. Biggest question <clears throat> for the Minnesota Wild. Are they going to be able to win in the playoffs without a number one center? And Joel Erickson Eck is not a number one center. Maybe he is. Sorry, I shouldn't say that he isn't. He's one of the best defensive centers in the league, no doubt about that. And he does pot 50 points. He can play the number one role. He can. He may up his offense here and take that number one role and, and go with it. So that would be a big, I still say it's the biggest question right now. Because at this point, I wouldn't want to play him in my number one spot. I would, and and honestly, playing with Kaprizov, I think they need a more skilled creative player to play with cap and where is that going to come from marco rossi is he going to be ready yet that's my biggest question for minnesota the second biggest question for me is can mark andre Fleury bring him to the promised land and for both my answer is i don't know which makes it a really good question so let me ask you guys if you think so mark andre Fleury is amazing he played really well in Chicago last year. His numbers don't reflect it, but that team was absolutely diabolically bad defensively. He was getting shots from uh, ridiculous. So, and I know he didn't really trend, it didn't really go well for his first little while in Minnesota, but Marc Andre Fleury always takes some time to get used to a defense. And everywhere he went, he did in Vegas when he moved. Because you got to remember, he played in Pittsburgh forever. He was so used to their system. Um, he's not a guy that has had to adjust. So I think given the, given the time, Marc-Andre Fleury can do it. He can. Is he going to? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a big if. I think it's a big if. But if any goaltender can, Marc-Andre, I guess that's the best way to say it. If any goaltender can, Marc-Andre Fleury is probably one of the goaltenders that can even if they don't get the number one center. Wait till the deadline. Maybe they surprise us or whatever. But those are my two biggest ifs for you. A little bit of a big if, but I don't think it's an if. Will Matthew Boldy break out this year? You might always say that he already did. And with their offensive depth of Zuccarello, Caprizo up on the wings like that, uh, Greenway hopefully steps up. Uh, Frederick Goudreau will probably get better. Like offensively, I'm not worried about Minnesota except for that up the middle. That's it. And finally, Montreal. And the big question in Montreal is, are they going to be the bottom of the league? Uh, and the answer to that for me is no. I just think they have too much on this in this lineup when you compare it to Chicago and Arizona for them to be bottom of the league this year. Uh, Josh Anderson actually had a fair, had not a bad defensive year last year. I was surprised to see that. Uh, came a long way. And I think Suzuki's only going to get better under the tutelage of St. Louis. Same as Caulfield. You know, I, I think this lineup is going to surprise a lot of teams a lot of the time. I like the Kirby Doc move. Um, Defense is sketchy. You got to see what Jordan Harris can do. Justin Barron, I think, is going to be great. It's not great, but it might be good enough. And Jake Allen seems to be able to hold him in a lot of the time. Although he's not a great goaltender, I don't think he's as bad as like Chicago and Arizona. And then there's other teams in there that are going to probably fall off too. And St. Louis had this team working hard every night. And that usually screws up, <laughs> you know, having motivation and pride can screw up that draft pick you're hoping for. And I think that's likely what's going to happen here in Montreal. All right. That's my full 42. That was half the league. We're going to do the rest of the half a league in the ne next episode. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about all of that, my friends, and sub up so you can be part of the Pearl of Wisdom show that I do with Peyton on the radio, Off the Wall Hockey, and many others live on my channel. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.